But going back to COVID, it seems like things are easing in Mexico, and especially in Mexico City, where hospitalizations that were once at 89% have gone down to 47%. However, the disease is still prevalent. Just yesterday, 200 people died in Mexico City, and the vaccination process is taking a very long time. But for more on this, I had a chance to speak with Chief of Internal Medicine at the Center of Infectious Diseases in the ABC Medical Center to talk about more about all these crazy things that are happening. Let's take a look. Okay, Dr. Moreno, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Uh, Dr. Moreno, are you the guy that was at a nude beach during Semaforo Rojo and uh, you know, uh, hanging out over there? Or is that another infectious disease doctor? I think that's another infectious disease. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't you don't go to nude beaches during uh, during uh, quarantine, right? You're a little bit safer. Than that. No, 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 no. <laughs> Doctor Rita, let's get started. I have a lot of questions for you because I know that our viewers are really interested in a lot of things that you have to say, uh, especially with your work at the ABC Hospital. The most important one is that the vaccines are happening. There are a lot of people in Mexico that are feeling that it's not safe or they don't know because they're saying that vaccines have taken 10 years or 15 years to develop and prove. And this vaccine has been fast tracked. So we don't really know uh, the efficacy of it. They just announced in Norway and Denmark uh, to ban the or to, uh, to stop the AstraZeneca uh, vaccine because of blood clots. So are, are, are people's concerns real? And what would you say to them? Well, uh, first of all, the uh, research that was done for the vaccines is not only a year from now, from, uh, from, from a year for a year ago. This is something that we were developing for other vaccines, and we used those platforms to develop the vaccine for the COVID. Uh, there was a lot of research in the HIV vaccine, the Ebola vaccine, so they were having the basis in which we these vaccines were developed. Uh, they used the technology that they were using to develop those other vaccines. So these vaccines came up much, much uh, faster than what we were expecting that. Uh, the vaccines are very safe. Now, these type of things, that, like, that, like the one that happens in Denmark and, and, and Norway, it's, uh, they see two or three cases and they try to protect the patients from having some side effects. It's like, for example, when, when the uh, uh, Pfizer vaccine was started in Norway, they reported three, uh, 33 people that were dead after uh, four months, uh, they received the vaccine. And that's because the protocols check patients for four months after they, they have the vaccine. And if they die, they are uh, uh, they do a, a look to the chart and see what happened. They, that doesn't mean that the vaccine was the reason for those people to die, but they have to do all the research to be sure that there was no relation between the vaccine and the, the cause of death. It, there, there was even a case in which uh, um, a light uh, it, it went down and hit the patient and, and the patient unfortunately died. And that patient was in that, uh, in, those, in that protocol in which they needed to know if there was no association between the vaccine and that accident. So they are very uh, meticulous in trying to define if there's anything that we are concerned. Denmark and, and Norway right now stop using the vaccine, but they are not sure if there's any uh, correlation between the AstraZeneca vaccine and the clothing. Remember AstraZeneca is the second vaccine more used in the world after Pfizer. Pfizer is the first one, uh, AstraZeneca is the second one. There have been more than uh, 80 million doses of AstraZeneca. So if, if there was a clothing problem with AstraZeneca, we will know from a lot of countries. And, and they, this is not something that we have seen. So also, I, we're, we're talking in, in Mexico, we're getting a lot of the Chinese vaccines, the Sputnik vaccine. And I know that the Mexican government with the UNAM is developing a, a Mexican vaccine. How safe and effective are those vaccines? And could we trust them in getting them here? Well, the thing is that you need to have the complete research from the vaccine. Uh, for the Sinovac vaccine and from the CanSino vaccine, that are the two Chinese. CanSino is a, a viral vector and uh, it's only one dose. And the Sinovac uh, vaccine is uh, a vaccine made from uh, inactivated virus. Uh, those vaccines haven't finished the phase three. 
So I'm a little bit concerned of be using those vaccines in Mexico without having the three, phase three study completely uh, done. Uh, the Sputnik vaccine had that reported in the Lancet and they were reviewed by uh, partners. So they, the, the Lancet is one of the best uh, uh, medical journals. Uh, the only issue with the uh, Sputnik vaccine the, the, was that all the studies were done in Russians. So there was not a study done in, in, in general population, but it seems to be working very well. And uh, it's using two type of adenovirus, 26 and 5. So it seems to be a safe vaccine. I know that it's probably something that is not going to be used in the States, but uh, because they are using more the uh, American and uh, the research that they have done with the Moderna, Pfizer, and the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Right. Okay. So uh, a lot of Americans or a lot of people who have the means to travel to the United States are watching tonight. Uh, if you were one of us, what would be your recommendation? Should we go? Even of course, there has to be a three to four a, a week waiting if you do not get the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, if you're getting the other vaccines. So you'd have to go back and forth or stay in the U.S. for that long period of time. Or is it something that we can just wait here in Mexico uh, for our turn in the order to get? What would you do if you were one of us? The, the problem in Mexico is that you don't know what vaccine is going to be using in you. And there's not, not the thing that you can say, well, I want Pfizer or I would like uh, AstraZeneca. You may get CanSino or you may get Sputnik or you may get uh, Sinovac. Um, I think that if you're an American, I will try to use those um, to be an American to go to the States and have the vaccine uh, received. Not because the other vaccines are not good. It's just because we don't have the a research that has been done with Johnson & Johnson, with uh, Moderna and with Pfizer. Those are one, uh, probably three of the five best vaccines that have been developed. Uh, Pfizer and Moderna, 95% uh, uh, efficacy from Pfizer, 94% of efficacy from Moderna. And the, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine showed that there was no uh, deaths from people that had received the vaccine from COVID. So, it protects you from having disease. It protects you from getting sick. In, it, it protects you from uh, dying from COVID. So I think those three are very good vaccines and I, I will try to get one of those. Absolutely. Okay, let's talk more about the situation now uh, in Mexico, especially in Mexico City. It seems like uh, most states are in yellow. Uh, Mexico City has gone to orange. They're starting to relax uh, different things. Hospitalizations are at 47% as of today. Uh, it seems like the mood and, and there's traffic back in the city that people are starting to go out. Is this the end of the tunnel or do we have a long way to go uh, for this to be over? I think that the real challenge is going to be Holy Week. Because if you look to the number of cases that we're having every day, it's very similar to what we had uh, at uh, July and August from, from last year. And at that time, we were on red. So it's very, uh, it, there are uh, uh, very few uh, cases compared to the peak that we had in January and December, but uh, the, we're still having a lot of cases, uh, uh, new cases in, in Mexico. So if people start relaxing the measures, if people don't, don't use masks, if the people go to places where the crowd places, we can start having another peak. And, and, and that's something that concerns us. And the other thing is that people start thinking that with the vaccine, we are all safe. And Israel showed that after they started the vaccine, there were more uh, infections because people relaxed the measures. So I would try to encourage people to, to get with the uh, prote preventive measures uh, a little bit harder for this couple of months, and then we're probably gonna be able to relax. But we still have in a point where the, the, we can have an outbreak and, and we can have the curve going up again. And we don't want that. There, there has been a lot of deaths here in Mexico. Uh, the numbers, the, the official numbers are very low compared to what we think that it has happened in Mexico. Right, so the, the, how are things in the hospital uh, where you are? Uh, uh, things been going down and you know, there's a lot of interesting things going on, uh, especially when we're going into an election season. And as we learned from the U.S. story, uh, COVID is going to be on a lot of people's mind and uh, wondering how the government is going to react to that moving into this election season and what they're going to be doing with policy. And I know you've been really vocal um, on, on social media about the government's response. Tell us all about this and, and what we, should we be expecting in the next couple of months? 
Well, the thing is that we are really doesn't we, we really don't have many people vaccinated so far. We started vaccinating people in, in December 24th, and we are a little bit over three million doses in a population where we have uh, one uh, 30 million uh, people. Compared with the states that you're getting almost to 100 million doses in a population of 300 million. So uh, we are very uh, slow in vaccinating people. And so uh, I'm a little bit concerned if, if this continues to be that way, we may uh, need a lot of time to get everybody vaccinated. And the problem with uh, slowing vaccination is that we can start having new outbreaks and we have seen what's happened with the variants, with the, the different types of, uh, of the COVID variants that have uh, spread from England, Brazil, and from South Africa. So I think this is something that needs to be um, approached as a world problem, because if you have countries where you are not controlling the disease, you may start having variants. And one of those variants could make all the vaccines do not work. And we're going to be starting like uh, we were in, in uh, March of last year. Absolutely. It, it, the U.S. gets into herd immunity, uh, as you say, like everybody can get a vaccine by the end of May. Uh, it's been widely available. I know I have a lot of friends of my age that are actually getting it now. Um, how will that affect Mexico? Uh, should I be making some plans uh, for the summer, for the fall? In, in your perspective, when are we going to be able to get out of this? Well, I hope the government understands that there need to be um, a real job from everybody, from all the uh, sections of the country. We need the private to, uh, to be involved. We need uh, the, the industry to be involved. We, we need all the programs that we had from all the vaccines programs to be employed, to try to vaccinate it as much as 500,000 uh, people a day. We are getting to 200,000 people a day in the last couple of days, but that's not, not, not something that is going to help get us from the COVID uh, in, uh, in this year. So we need to increase it, a number of, of, of doses that are applied. And for that, you're going to need the help from other sectors of the, of the country. And uh, this government has been very close. They, are, uh, they try to manage everything by them. This is something that they can't uh, afford to be doing by themselves because they, there's no possibility that they can make all the vaccines that need to be done in the time that it needs to be done to control this problem. I understand. But uh, I just want to say again, Dr. Moreno, you have done uh, so much great work. I know a lot of uh, friends of mine have relied on you and your staff. And uh, it, I always say in my year, like, oh, I'm complaining that I'm indoors, but I just can't imagine the year that you've had and all the work that you've done to, to save lives this year. And, and let's hope that the government uh, knows that an election is coming and that they could be riding on, on the COVID response and, and they make some changes and make things happen faster in the next three months. But thank you so much for joining us on the show, Dr. Moreno, and, and all of our, our support is with you in these coming months. And hopefully we won't have another peak again. Yes, thank you, Dan. And uh, good night to everybody. And uh, try to be careful. We still in this uh, time of the pandemic where we can't relax. We need to be very careful going out with uh, careful measures, uh, use the mask, uh, avoid crowding uh, places and uh, be washing your hands every time. And if we get these two or three months over, we may be starting to see the light real coming on. Let's hope so. All right, Dr. Moreno, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Dan. Take care.